Dear viewers, welcome to today's video. What you are about to hear is not just news, not just another development project, but a story, one that has the power to inspire millions. This story begins in Africa, in a land that the world has often ignored, and yet today it is forcing the world to turn its eyes towards it. It is about Burkina Faso and about a revolution that is not being fought with guns or wealth but with imagination, courage, and the belief that even the poorest nation can carve a path of greatness. For centuries, people were told a single narrative, that only powerful nations with modern industries, billions of dollars, and access to advanced technologies could achieve progress. Europe and America were seen as the models, Asia as the rising giant, and Africa was often left painted in the shadow of poverty. Burkina Faso, a landlocked country, was always considered too weak, too small and too poor to dream of true independence. It was a nation chained by colonial history, weighed down by poverty, and overlooked by those who never believed it could rise. But history is being rewritten. And this time, it is not the so-called giants who hold the pen, but a young African leader, Ibrahim Traoré. Only in his mid-30s, he has dared to dream what others could not. He has dared to tell his people that progress is not the birthright of the West, that dignity is not a gift to be begged for, but something that every nation must claim for itself. And how has he done it? Not with billion-dollar skyscrapers, not with expensive imported cars, but with something that at first sounded almost unbelievable, wooden vehicles. Yes, wooden buses, wooden vans, and wooden trucks, designed and built right in the heart of Burkina Faso. Now, let us pause and ask, why wood? Why not steel? Why not aluminum? Why not follow the same path that every developed country took? Because, as Traoré explained, Africa cannot simply copy the world. It must create its own future, one rooted in its soil, one that uses its strengths, and one that reflects its own culture. These buses are not ordinary. They are crafted with carefully selected timber, cut, shaped, and joined using modern engineering methods. The frames are treated with special protective coatings, making them resistant to fire and water. They are designed to survive under the burning sun and through heavy rains. The floors are made with durable hardwood, strong enough to carry weight for decades. The interiors, on the other hand, are lined with soft, beautiful wood to give passengers comfort and warmth. Imagine stepping into one of these buses. The seats are clean and modern, with hand supports for safety. Ceiling fans circulate air, and in some versions, solar-powered cooling systems provide relief in the hot African climate. Every detail is crafted not just for transportation, but for dignity. Unlike the broken-down trucks of the past, these buses invite passengers to feel proud of their journey. Each bus can carry around 40 to 50 passengers. And here is where the real revolution begins. They will not run on petrol or diesel. Instead, they are powered by hybrid engines, part electricity, part biofuel. This biofuel is produced from crops that grow right in Burkina Faso, sugarcane husks, corn kernels, and sunflower seeds. Instead of spending millions to import oil, the nation will use what its own farmers produce. It is local, it is sustainable, and it strengthens the economy from the ground up. Even more impressive, the roofs of these buses are fitted with solar panels. These panels power the fans, the lights, and the smaller systems inside the bus. This makes them not only eco-friendly, but also incredibly cost-effective. Tires, too, are being recycled and reused, designed to handle the rough roads of rural Africa. Think about the difference this makes for ordinary people. For decades, villagers and students had to rely on crumbling trucks, unsafe vehicles, and exhausting journeys. Mothers walked for hours with children in their arms just to reach the nearest town. Farmers carried their produce on their backs or on donkey carts, often losing half of it before reaching the market. Now, with these buses, a woman from a small village can step into a wooden bus and reach the city in comfort. A student can sit on a proper seat, reading a book while traveling to school. A farmer can ride along, carrying crops that will actually arrive fresh to the market. The impact goes beyond passengers. Local carpenters and craftsmen now have meaningful work. Every bus built is not just a vehicle, but a source of employment for dozens of families. Farmers find new markets because their crops are used for biofuel. Mechanics and engineers get to innovate with hybrid engines. Even recycling becomes a business, as old tires and waste materials are transformed into durable bus parts. Traoré is not stopping with buses alone. He has announced wooden vans and mini trucks capable of carrying two to three tons of goods. 
Imagine a farmer who once depended on foreign trucks, paying high costs just to move a few sacks of grain. Now, he will have access to affordable, eco-friendly vehicles built in his own country. These trucks will connect villages, bring food to markets, and empower rural economies like never before. But perhaps the most powerful part of this project is its symbolism. For generations, Africans were told that they could not build, that they could not innovate, that they could only consume what others produced. Wooden buses prove otherwise. They prove that creativity matters more than money, that determination can be stronger than steel, and that freedom is not handed down, it is built. Traoré himself calls them wheels of freedom. And indeed, every wheel carries a story. A child riding to school with pride, a mother traveling safely with her baby, a student dreaming of the future while sitting comfortably in a locally built bus. These stories together write a new chapter in African history. Burkina Faso does not plan to stop at its borders. The vision is bigger. Plans are already in motion to export these vehicles to neighboring countries like Mali, Niger, and Ghana. One bus exported is not just a product, but a message. That Africa is no longer a passive observer of progress, but an active creator of its own destiny. Think about the bigger picture. Wooden buses may sound small compared to the giant industries of Europe, but their meaning is vast. They represent independence, they represent resilience, and they represent unity. They show that even a small nation can create solutions that touch multiple challenges at once. Transport, jobs, environment, and economy. And so, dear viewers, the question we leave with you today is this. Can Burkina Faso's wooden buses light the torch for a larger African revolution? Can they inspire other nations to stop waiting for foreign aid and to start building with what they already have? The world is watching. Some are skeptical, some are amazed, but one thing is certain. Burkina Faso has proven that progress does not have to be imported. It can be carved, shaped, and built by the very hands that once were told they could only serve. If this story inspires you, then remember to share it. Share it not just online, but with your friends, your families, and your communities. Because stories like this carry hope, and hope is contagious. Burkina Faso has taken the first step, but the journey ahead is long. With leaders like Ibrahim Traoré, with people who believe in themselves, with buses that carry not just passengers, but pride, Africa's journey toward independence and dignity has already begun. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support is more than numbers. It is a voice, a statement, and a reminder that together, we can celebrate every spark of progress. Remember, true change often begins not with money, but with belief. And today Burkina Faso has shown us what belief can build.